WordPress, WordPress, WordPress. It's a really easy way to set up a website, and it's also one of the more dangerous ways to set up a website. Well, not necessarily WordPress itself. I would say that if you were to run a bare bones blog style website with WordPress, it's probably going to be pretty secure. But those plugins, oh, those pesky plugins that nobody seems to really ever audit the source code for and the website admins rarely update them. And oftentimes the plugins themselves aren't even released as an open source plugin because they want to just give you a trial version that barely does anything and then get you to pay 50 or $60 for a full version of that software. So those plugins are usually to blame for the WordPress sites getting hacked. Now, this particular plugin isn't just some obscure one that only a few sites that you can count on your fingers and toes are using. This plugin is actively installed on more than half a million websites out there. And it's a plugin that's actually kind of important. So this uh, WP Statistics, as the name implies, is gathering statistics about visitors to your website. So let's say, for example, you want to create some kind of online store. This plugin could tell you things like what kind of devices your visitors are accessing the site from. Uh, you can see if, for example, most of them are mobile customers instead of accessing it from desktop platforms. And if that's the case, you're going to want to make sure that the mobile version of your site does not suck because if your site sucks, no one's gonna spend their money with you. Uh, or you can see what country your visitors are from. So you can strategize how to convert sales from different markets. Maybe if you see that more Germans are starting to visit your site, you can improve your supply lines to try and ship uh, either more products to Germany or ship them faster at lower rates. So it's definitely a useful category of plugin. And this is going to be running on a lot of websites. Now, this WordPress statistics is by no means the most popular plugin that gives you this kind of data. That title probably goes to Monster Insights, but this plugin here uses Google Analytics to give you that data, uh, which is great if you only care about the raw data gathering ability, but it's not so great for the privacy of your end users because their analytic data is going to be shared with Google as well. And this is pretty much hinted at if we look at the description of WP Statistics. Do you need a simple tool to know your website statistics? Do you need to represent these statistics? Are you caring about your user's privacy while analyzing who are interested in your businesses or websites? So yeah, there you go. This is basically supposed to be a non-spooky way or I guess more privacy-friendly way uh, to get those statistics about your website's users. So now that you're up to speed on the details of the plugin, let's get to the technical details of the actual hack. So we've got the CVE ID right here. Uh, its severity is 7.5, so pretty high severity. Um, and the description is an unauthenticated time-based blind SQL injection. And this affects all versions of the plugin before 13.0.8, uh, which is the latest version of it. Um, I think, uh, well, yeah, it'll show you up there that that's the latest version of it. All right, so WP Statistics is a WordPress plugin. All right, we already know what it is. As an administrator accessing the WP Statistics pages menu, item generates a SQL query in order to display statistics on which pages have been received the most traffic. Uh, while the pages page was not intended for administrators, was intended for administrators only, it would not display information to non-admin users. It was possible to start loading this pages constructor by sending a WP admin forward slash admin PHP with the page parameters set to WPS pages page. Since the SQL query ran in the constructor for the pages page, this meant that any site visitor, even those without a login, could cause the SQL query to run. A malicious actor could then supply malicious values for the ID or type parameters. Uh, and so we have a snippet of code where you can see at the bottom those uh, that get ID and that get type that was just mentioned. So unfortunately, while the SQL query used escape SQL to attempt to escape the ID and type input parameters, it did not use a prepared statement. 
since the ID input parameter was not quoted, it was trivial to bypass escape SQL function and generate queries, which could be used to extract sensitive information from the user. As this was a time-based blind SQL injection vulnerability, exfiltrating information would be a relatively slow process. Um, yeah, so with these, you usually can't just get everything in one go. It's kind of slow, so you're gonna most likely go after targeted information. Uh, so it'd be impractical to use it to extract bulk records, but high value information such as user emails, password hashes, and encryption keys and salts could be extracted in a matter of hours with the help of automated tools such as SQL map. In a targeted attack, this vulnerability could be used to extract personally identifiable information from commerce sites, which is what this is most likely going to be used on, containing customer information. This underscores the importance of having security protections with an endpoint firewall in place wherever sensitive data is stored. We recently reported on another SQL injection vulnerability in which we were able to bypass a number of protections. And this is yet another example of why escaping input is insufficient to prevent SQL injection. And then down here, we've got uh, the timeline for when everything was going down. So March 13th, 2021, the WordFence threat intelligence team finishes researching a vulnerability in the WP statistics plugin and contacts uh, Verona Labs. So that's the vendor that makes the plugin. And they respond and we provide full disclosure. March 15th, so two days later, the vendor replies with a fixed version. So they're not publicly releasing it at this point. They're just sending it um, to WordFence so that they can test it to see if it corrects all the issues. And i um, not sure exactly how long it was tested for. Maybe we can assume that it was uh, this 10 day gap or so. And then on March 25th, the patched version, so that's the latest one, 13.0.8, is released. So the timeline for this fix is really good, but we cannot forget that this is a WordPress plugin. Most of the people who are creating WordPress websites are probably not going to be that tech savvy or security conscious to begin with. Uh, these are usually people who just don't really know a lot about full stack development and instead just want to glue a bunch of plugins together to get a functional website. Uh, so there's probably a bunch of people that are still going to be running uh, the unpatched version of this plugin on their customer facing websites that are vulnerable to this blind SQL injection attack. Now, obviously, if the end user just doesn't update, you can't really put that much blame on the vendor. But I will say that given the totality of these circumstances, we've got a somewhat severe vulnerability on all previous versions of a plugin that you know is probably going to be used by noobs. The vendor could have probably done a little bit more to indicate that, uh, you know, the 13.0.8 actually has security fixes. Because if we go on to um, the development tab of WP Statistics, we can't really see any indication of that going on. So like if th this is the, you know, official WordPress plugin site, uh, so we have the change log for 13.0.8, improvement getting page ID and type queries for the admin page, added no cache in the hit endpoint response to compatibility with Cloudflare HTML caching, improvement exceptions to make sure working properly. So this is basically talking about the security fix. I mean, we know that now, but nowhere in here does it mention bug fix, security fix, you know, none of those keywords are used. Instead, they say improvement, which to me, e even as I, I guess you would say I'm a fairly tech savvy person, when I see the word improvement, I don't usually think of that as a security fix. I think of that as, you know, you guys made it faster or you made it use less RAM. You know, it's a performance improvement. That's what improvement means to me. Same thing if we take a look at their GitHub. So this is WP Statistics GitHub. And, you know, we can go through, um, I think, March 15th. Yeah, so improvement, getting page ID and type queries for admin page. So March 15th, that's when they would have actually, um, that's when they would have created that uh, fixed version. Um, and then, of course, they released the fixed version on the 25th and top pages like merge branch. Again, there's no mention of any type of security fixes. So what are the lessons that we can learn from this hack? 
Uh, well, for one, and I would recommend this with any website, even if you're not using WordPress, keep your website as simple as possible. Don't install any unnecessary plugins or have unnecessary code running. All right, generally, the more complicated something is, the more likely it's going to be to have vulnerabilities in it. Um, I know I said early on that this plugin could be very useful for a lot of people, but WordPress, it kind of has a way of recommending plugins to people. Just, you know, hey, if since you installed this, you'll probably like this, or oh, we recommend you install this. Uh, and sometimes if you install plugins, they almost come as a bundle and install a whole bunch of uh, different plugins at once. Um, and again, since the people that are probably going to be setting up WordPress sites are noobs, they might just install it without really thinking about it and just not actually using it. Uh, just like I bet a lot of people have this same plugin here installed, but they aren't actually using it and benefiting from it. Uh, also, don't just rely on your vendors to disclose security fixes because as we saw with this plugin, if you were using it and you didn't read about this vulnerability on Port Swigger and you didn't watch this video, you may have never known that there was a security vulnerability that was patched in the update. Uh, end users, they tend not to be very good about installing updates anyway. That's probably why OS's like Windows 10 have started to force users to install their updates. Uh, WordPress doesn't do that though. They don't force you to install updates. So it's important to point out the differences on your plugin that, you know, the difference between an update that is maybe just going to add a more polished crap or just make it a little bit faster versus an update that prevents terrible things from happening like blind SQL injection through a statistics plugin.